So I think it's time for us to kick things, kick things off. What do you think, Alex and Yurai? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. Perfect. So welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the conversational presenting. And conversational presenting has a long history in the classroom. And there are different names, like it has been with us for a millennial. And today, we'll be talking about how to bring conversational presenting back to the classroom with the help of technology and how to bring it to the future. And let me introduce myself. My name is Yurai Hope, and I'm the chief meeting designer at Slido. And my job is to make sure and to help the team to design and facilitate and lead the meetings that they are engaging, interactive, and that they really are the strategic tool for running basically this company. I also have the background in education. For over a year, I was teaching uh, in, in Vietnam. Uh, sometimes the, the, the classroom was packed with 40 plus kids and that kind of a crowd is totally unforgiving when it comes to education. So whoever you teach and uh, whether you are an educator, presenter or a trainer, you have my uh, full, um, full admiration for that. Uh, over here today with me is also Hirai Pal. Hi everyone. And he's the head of partnerships and he's also the brain and the muscle and the heart uh, behind our most recent integration with the Google Slides. That integration uh, helps many teachers bring live polling and more interaction to their uh, classrooms. So he's going to talk us more about uh, some use cases and also about the technology. Last but definitely not least is uh, Alex Netsley is here with us. Hi everyone. And Alex is the person who is actually responsible for bringing us all over here together. And she will be also monitoring uh, all the incoming comments and the questions that you will be sending us. So uh, she is going to be the hidden force uh, behind the interaction and monitoring all the back channels. Let's take a look. Um, let's take a quick glance at the agenda and what is really ahead of us today. Uh, so we, first of all, we're going to uh, take a look at the methodology at what uh, conversational presenting is. Then we are going to share a couple of real uh, world examples um, of a great audience engagement and engagement of the students. And finally, we are going to talk about the Google Slides uh, integration and URI is going to basically take you behind the scenes on that. But obviously, we don't want to be talking about the interaction without interacting with you. So we have the first interaction point ready for you. And uh, I would like to ask you at this point, grab your smartphone, or if you're watching this on a computer, open a new tab and just go to slido.com. Just go to slido.com and enter the hashtag classroom. And um, there, are all, there are already 91 participants that joined us. And we would love to know where are you calling in from? Just please type in um, the name of your country or the name of your city. Uh, great, we've got a New York, uh, we've got Istanbul, come United, Na United Kingdom, London, really nice, California, Rochester. Uh, somebody is posting through the chat. Uh, please, uh, we are going to take this interaction to the Slido. So uh, uh, go to slido.com on your smartphone, or if you're watching this from your computer, open a new tab and just basically type in Slido and, uh, and, the, and the hashtag, which is the classroom. Canada is in the lead. Wow. Very go nice. Canada. Go Canada. Awesome. Uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Slovakia as well. Uh, our home country, New York, Texas. Um, Yurai and Alex uh, are calling in from New York. It's 12 p.m. Over, for, over there for them. I'm calling in from Bratislava, Europe. It's 6 p.m. Uh, so we are wrapping things uh, up over here. So thank you very much. This was really a warm-up poll uh, just to get you familiar with the tool if you are not already, but also to understand um, who is actually calling in. Let's move on to the next poll and now uh, get closer to the topic of today. And the topic of today will be really the student engagement and the conversational presenting. So how would you rate interaction in the classroom today? It can be the interaction in your own classroom. Uh, it can be the interaction at the, the university level. 
uh, it can be the interaction uh, in the classrooms of your colleagues, let's say, or if you are not an educator, like the interaction in general at the presentation. Okay, we've got a range of responses coming in. Uh, we are currently around 3.6 score. Yeah, so it seems that it's pretty average. Like people are engaging and using some interactive techniques, but hopefully at the end of this uh, webinar, you're gonna be equipped with the tools and with the techniques that will help you to move uh, the score closer to the six. Cool, well, let's just move on. So hopefully you are warmed up. At this point, please also in the second tab, uh, which reads Q&A, you can post any questions that you might have. Anything that comes to your mind as we'll be talking, uh, as mentioned, Alex will be monitoring those questions and passing them on to Uri or myself. Well, let's move on. Whether we are ready or not, presentations and lectures are basically being disrupted. And students' expectations basically changed. And they want to be engaged and we want to be engaged if we happen to find ourselves in the audience. And it's not just a solo observation, but uh, there are some powerful forces uh, that are shaping the world of the presentations as we know them. First of all, online learning opportunities. There's been incredible uptake of MOOCs. And these learning opportunities are actually challenging the role of the lectures as such, as a place of just a simple uh, transfer of, of, the, of, the, of the information, because people are constantly uh, absorbing and collecting new uh, sorts of information. Um, just one number over there, which I was completely blown away with, uh, there's one billion hours of videos that are watched on YouTube on a daily basis. Obviously, there's a lot of Lady Gaga, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of Gangnam style and then the Despachito, but there are a lot of videos that are instructional, that are educational, where people are collecting that information and are educating themselves. One thing that they are lacking is that interaction with the, with the teacher, with the instructor. The second powerful force that we have so, sort of observed, observed that we are used to being empowered to interact. Um, there's another stat, 90% of social media users engage with the brands, with the businesses. And ironically, when we sit in the classroom, when we sit in at the presentation, we feel hopeless, we feel sort of like a stuck. And this is like a, something that is really becoming a part of our DNA, that we want to be enabled to interact, whether it's a, uh, whether it's a brand or ideally another human being. So this really puts a lot of pressure and an, an, an another sort of um, importance on, on, on creating the meaningful interaction and the conversations. And the, the third powerful uh, force that is actually shaping those presentations is the decreasing or the attention span that is dropping. There is a various research, but on average, uh, an average person has an attention span of about uh, 10 minutes. With the lectures that last for 60 to 90 minutes, yeah, there needs to be some engagement in place just to keep that attention up or regain it. So just in a nutshell, we have to empower students and engage them in a conversation. Um, as mentioned at the start, lucky us, conversation in the classroom have a long history. And we have to just come back uh, to this history and bring more conversations. And luckily, we have tools, great technology tools that help us to lead those conversations at a scale. So it's time for us to bring the traditional of conversational presenting back. The only definition of this presentation, I promise, and just to make sure, just we are on, uh, all on the same basically page um, and when we talk about the conversational presenting. When we talk about the conversational presenting, we're thinking about the instruction method and a method of active learning uh, that engages students in a conversation, either with you as the instructor that you lead the conversation with the audience or with each other by creating a smaller groups and letting people to converse in a smaller, uh, smaller setup. And absolutely, the goal is to better retain information to help them learn more effectively. So that's what we mean when we are talking about the conversational presenting. And you might be asking, okay, so what's the difference between the traditional presentation and the, con uh, and the conversational one? So the traditional one is about the one-way instruction method, little to no interaction with the audience, and very often asking one question, just one person. On the other hand, we've got the conversational methods 
that create a two-way conversation, meaningful interaction at the scale, and with the use of, let's say, the live polling tools, you can ask all students and you can collect all the answers basically from them. So ultimately, it's about making sure that every voice is heard. Like when I was a teacher, I wanted to engage every single person, every single student, making sure that he or she was learning and can really have a say in how the lectures are basically done. And talking about Slido, that was also the reason why we embarked on this, on this mission. Slido was born in the academia and we wanted to empower people uh, to have a say in the lectures and also collect the feedback so we improve the lectures as we know them. And Slido is really an easy to use Q&A and polling platform that gives a voice to every single student in the classroom. And until this moment, we worked with 320,000 educators, presenters and events and helped them to create a better conversation. Why I'm stating this number is that we collected all that knowledge, all those insights, and came up with a simple methodology that can help you create the conversational presenting in your classroom. And this is the methodology, um, a very simple one, uh, of three stages that will help you to create more engagement in your classroom. So it starts with the, with, with, with the, with the planning phase, obviously. Um, interaction is like the content or any other part of the, of the, of the, of the presentation. You have to think about it strategically. You have to prepare for it. So we're going to be talking about how to prepare those interaction points. And then we're going to move uh, to the second stage. It's about the actual engagement in the classroom or during the classroom. It's about introducing, facilitating, and debriefing those uh, interaction activities that you basically uh, thought of in the planning phase. And finally, just to close the circle, you need to get the feedback towards the end of the classroom just to make sure that you can improve your next presentation because very often we are left totally, totally blank. And just to make sure we don't go too far, we're going to focus on how to use live polls to deliver a conversational presenting. But um, as mentioned, this is just one of the part, but the last, the, 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 the last month we hosted the training that took a look at this topic holistically and took us two days. Today we have about 45 minutes, so we are going to focus on uh, this part. Cool, Alex, do we have any questions? We do, but they're not necessarily re related to this topic. So maybe we can leave them. Brilliant. <laughs> so let's just keep them for the end. Um, please feel free to ask any questions along the way, as I mentioned. So let's take a look now at the planning uh, phase. And I have another interaction point basically ready for you, obviously, just to re-engage you. How do you prepare for interaction with your students um, in your classroom. So, or when you are hosting a presentation, how do you get ready? What is, wh when is that moment? Um, when do you actually do that? We've got a four, uh, 10, 12 people in, okay. 24, so 63% of you are preparing for interaction when you are creating your slides. Cool. We've got already 110 participants who joined us. Welcome everybody who joined us later. If you would like to uh, be part of these interactive uh, exercises, uh, just go to slido.com and enter the, the code classroom, either on your computer or on a, on a device, that, on, a, on a smartphone. Cool. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this is really exciting to see that every single one of you uh, is actually preparing strategically for the for the interaction for the engagements. Uh, personally, I also prepare for the interaction when I'm creating my slides. Actually, once I'm uh, once I'm done with the, with the slides. And over the time, uh, let me just move on. Over the time, we learned that preparing for interaction is as important as content itself. And um, as you've just not noticed, um, as you've just seen, all of you are taking that preparation really with the utmost care. And when we're talking about the interaction, the right moment that we were preparing for this webinar is once you have the slide deck basically ready, start thinking about where to place that interaction. Just find those spots to in in insert those interaction points. And just to be a bit more concrete, um, obviously, most of the presentations and lecture uh, follow this kind of an arc, start, during, and end. 
And let me give you a, for a few examples how to uh, um, how to uh, of of how you can run those uh, those, those interaction points. So when you are when you are starting the presentation, um, it's it's always a fun fun thing to, to 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 start on a light note. So imagine you are giving you are giving a lecture uh, on the literature. You're talking about the Lord of the Rings. Why not to drop in a poll if you were a car character from Lord of the Rings? Who would you be? This is just an example, right? But starting with a warm-up poll can really just break the dice and uh, get people engaged. Another type of poll that you can run, which is really effective, is what, like asking the students, what do they actually expect to learn? So at the start of the unit, at the start of the semester, you can, you can ask them, what are you expecting to learn today? Somebody will post in like a practical stuff, somebody like a, a real-time use cases, some, some is more into the theory. The third type of uh, poll that works really well at the start is how familiar, uh, familiar are you with the topic? You might want to really gauge the level of the knowledge uh, of your students and uh, adjust the content of your lecture accordingly. So imagine you're giving, you're giving a course on the, on, the, on the Google Sheets or on the Excel. You can ask something like that. How familiar are you with the Excel? I'm a pro, um, I'm just starting. And once again, you can gauge that kind of a uh, um, level of understanding and of the knowledge that students are bringing in. Let's move on to the during part. And obviously every presentation, every lecture is different. So I'm going to share with you mostly one golden rule and try to re-engage people approximately every 10 minutes. So if your uh, class is 60 minutes long, try to use somewhere between five to six interaction points. And I know, as I mentioned, this webinar is mostly about the live polls, but can, you can use all sorts of things like videos and more physical exercise by swept, getting people to swap their places, forming the groups, getting the discussions. But as a general uh, rule, try to use uh, a poll or a other activity every 10 minutes just to regain a student's attention. When we are talking about the content and talking about the polls, uh, it always works great to quiz the students and uh, ask them what is the parameter, for instance, of the globe, if you're talking about uh, geography or anything like that. If you would like to check the understanding and you're, you're hosting a class um, about the GDPR, you can ask what does GDPR actually stand for or, stand for, or something, something in those lines. And during the, during the lecture itself, it's always great to uh, use something, some kind of interaction every 10 minutes. And obviously, everything Everything has, has its end, um, and it's also a great opportunity for you to wrap things up. And just to share two examples um, that work really uh, like a magic, whether it's a lecture or a presentation, ask them what is their key takeaway? What are they taking away from them? You can use a word cloud and getting them, okay, in one word, uh, what is the main takeaway that you got from this, uh, from this course or from this lecture? Uh, another uh, type is, which of these topics was most helpful to you? Um, so you cover a range of uh, content, obviously, and you might want to know what worked, what didn't. Uh, so this is a good poll just to drop uh, towards the end of the classroom, once again, as a, as, as, as a feedback for you. So we looked at the timeline, we looked at some of the examples, and uh, just to give you some concrete examples and how we were thinking about building this presentation, we already used three types of polls. So at the start, we used the first one, where you're calling in from to break the ice. The second one was to basically understand your perception of the interaction. So the second poll was more about learning about your perception and how you see basically things. Uh, before we opened up this planning stage, uh, we used the third poll to open uh, basically a new topic and to re-engage you. So um, this is how we were talking about, how we were thinking about it. And don't worry, as you can expect, there are more polls and more interaction points to come. And at this point, we're moving to the next stage and let me give a word over to my colleague, Uri. Awesome, thanks, Uri. So as, as Uri uh, sort of walk you through, you now hopefully have the idea of what sort of interaction you wanna plan, you have some ideas for it, and now let's, let's actually talk through the engage portion of this methodology. Let's talk you through how you can actually facilitate introduce, debrief all these planned interaction points throughout your lecture or presentation. So what we actually done, we prepared three stories, three use cases, uh, but we want to give it to the hands of you again. So 
here's a quick poll just to see which one of uh, which two actually of these three would you like to hear uh, about today? We don't have time for all of them probably, but uh, out of these, which one is the one you're most interested in? The first one is a story from NYU, from the University of New York. Uh, and this is how about how a lecturer uh, introduced life polling throughout his lectures to check students' understanding with, with life polls. The other one is about creating peer-to-peer -peer instruction at scale. It's about how a session created discussions in small groups to really multiply that learning. And the last one is about the power of anonymous Q&A. Uh, as you said, we, we're talking mostly about polling here, but uh, this one is slightly different and it's about really giving equal opportunity to everyone in the room uh, to ask and pose questions. So we've got almost 50 people in. Um, I'm not gonna reveal the results yet because this is the moment we've been all waiting for. Um, and we've got 60, let's get a few more seconds. Let's get to 70 uh, and then I'll show the results. Four more, three more. What was there? 69. Come on, one more. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, now I skipped it. <laughs> oh no. Oops, having technical difficulties. There we are. Cool. So the winner is creating, oh, surprising. Uh, creating peer to peer instruction at scale. So I'll let URI tackle that one and then check students understand with polling. I'll share that story from NYU. Uh, and perhaps we can start in some of the Q and A, anonymous Q and A points throughout these two stories. Awesome, thank you. You do you want to start? Do you want me to start with this, the, the NYU one? Um, actually, start with uh, start with NYU just to you know break the dynamic. Let's hear it from URI first, and then I'm just going to talk uh, talk to you about how to create that peer to peer instruction at the scale. Awesome, also much more easier from the logistics of our slides. Um, so this story is, as I said, it's from NYU. It's a professor from, from a professor that we work with quite closely. And when he shared his story with us, we're actually really surprised and it's, it's a really powerful one. What he struggled with, and let's actually look at the challenge first, was uh, class participation. It was actually as low as 10, 20% uh, when he was conducting his lectures. Um, he was struggling with students who basically, as uh, I'm sure you used it, is studied last minute for the exams ended up failing the class and it was really worrying him. So that was the main struggle. And also he was only able to ask one student one question at a time. So it wasn't creating that dynamic that he was hoping for. Now, what this professor did throughout his lecture, he started introducing these live polls with the goal to check for students' understanding. So every time he would sort of deliver a chunk of content, he would introduce a poll like this. So this is really almost like a quiz-like uh, poll, uh, which he would run uh, and instantly he would see if the student has understood the, the content he just delivered or if he needs to spend some more time on it. Uh, this is a great time. Uh, this is another example. This is a great time for the students to also spend a few seconds self-reflecting on, okay, do you really get what, what was just delivered? Do I have any questions? It was a great pause for them as well. Now, students saw the results on the screen, uh, same way as, as we're showing you here. This is uh, a true or false example of the poll that he did as well. Um, and then he revealed the correct answer as well. So they could instantly get that feedback as well. Uh, he would of course pause and sort of elaborate if it was needed. It was a great pulse check for him. Uh, if half of the class got the wrong answer, he would spend a few more minutes uh, more on that topic before moving on. So talking about the results now, by doing this, he actually increased the class participation from 20% to 80%. He introduced these polls throughout the class um, after each chunk of content. And also he improved the grade average by the whole one level. So really great results by really simply just adding these interaction points throughout his lecture and not leaving uh, the students alone in the class. Uh, quick summary on how you can pull this off. Uh, as I mentioned, space out the polls to check for student understanding after each sort of chunk of content or, or topic. Comment on the results. This one is really important. Um, we, we always try to reiterate that uh, and sort of keep this in mind. We're not doing the polls or any interaction points just for the sake of doing a poll. Uh, really, the value comes out of the discussion that uh, the interaction creates. And also, address any unclear questions from your student early on. So, we'll not go much deeper into the Q&A topic, but this is a great opportunity that Slido also 
allows you to crowdsource questions from students um, also anonymously. And uh, for this lecture in mind at NYU, he was able to pause and take those questions while doing those polls as well. So real quick story, quick use case on um, using live polls for, for checking student understanding at NYU. Uh, now, before we wrap this one up, a uh, quick pulse check on, on your end. We, we're really interested to see how much this resonates with you. So maybe you've done something similar already, maybe it's new, but let us know, is, is this relevant? You, you want to try this out at your, at your next lecture or in your classroom? It sounds interesting, but you have to do some thinking, uh, or is it completely not relevant for your use case maybe? Um, I'm gonna do a better job at showing the results now. No, it's not. There we go. There we go. Yes, can't wait to try. That's awesome. So more than almost 60%. Uh, sounds interesting. Almost 46% don't really. That's really good. That's a good policy for us as well to see what, what resonates. Awesome. Thank you. Do you have any questions on, on this one? Can we pause here? We have a question about polls in general. Okay. Um, so someone is asking, can polls remain open? Um, for access by students maybe after the class? They can, yeah, it, it, it's, it's possible uh, with Slido to basically open up a poll or even, you can even send a poll open before the class or before a presentation uh, and have the attendees sort of vote on that and also post, uh, post class or post lecture. So right now what we're doing in this presentation, we're kind of moving through content pretty quickly, but it's possible. I think we can move on. That's it for now. Cool. You ready to want to take over for the second story? Let's do it. And I'm very excited that you actually picked this one. This is my, this is my favorite. Um, because why it's really my favorite, it's uh, that, they, that, that, that there's a shift from this sage uh, basically on the stage uh, that very often we as lecturers are perceived as that we have to basically understand everything and we have to know everything. But this kind of a use case uh, really um, helps to create a small discussion groups uh, among the, the students so they can, uh, they can explain the difficult concepts to each other, but also come up with some incredible ideas when they collaborate together. So as I started, like the main challenge that we as educators or presenters often face is that people are looking at us as, 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 as the only expert basically room. And very often it's far from truth. Um, there's just like a, so much knowledge in the room among the, the students. They have a rich background, they have a rich experience, and very often uh, they are able to better explain a new concepts uh, to each other than the the, 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 the the educator is able to do uh, on his or on her own. Uh, on top of that, also they can come up when the, the brains are combined, they can come up with some incredible ideas. And let me share a story over here from the Future Leaders Forum. Um, it's, a, it's an initiative that brings the events industry um, students with some of the experts in the in the industry. And the goal is to really connect the students with people who are already working over there and bridge that kind of a gap that often arises between the practice and basically the theory. So they hosted a 90 minute long session. And um, as I've just uh, used an adjective long, it is really a large uh, basically chunk of time and you need to come up with some kind of an exercises to make it more digestible. So what they decided to do, they decided to bring in five different speakers and get them to speak on different uh, topic. But the, the, pre the, the presentations were really short. It was, they were only seven minutes uh, short and they served the, the purpose of introducing students to the topic. What was really, really important, and that's where uh, the potential was unlocked, was in those small groups that, uh, that were formed after the, the, the content was basically presented by the experts. So in the groups of five to seven um, students, uh, after the content was presented, and it ranged from behavior science, to technology, to meeting design, to well-being, students had to uh, brainstorm some of the practices, some of the tips that they would include at the event that they would basically organize. 
And that was the moment that the, 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 the main learning was actually happening in that discussion in the small groups. So if you'd like to replicate it, uh, just uh, give people, uh, give your students an assignment or a question that they have to basically come up with a solution or brainstorm with some ideas. But there was the third step that was also important. Within these small groups, there were some great ideas that were being formed and shared. But there were about um, 10 basically groups like this. And you want to bring it up for the whole um, basically classroom to see. So they asked the students to submit the ideas that they were coming up within those small groups through the open text poll and bring it up for everybody to see and multiply the learning in this way. And they repeated it for five times. Uh, and they, in this way, they were able to break the dynamic otherwise of a, of a really monotonous 90-minute um, long session. So here are some of the examples. The first topic, the first assignment that they were given was, what social environmental practices can you include at your event? Uh, students came up with some nice uh, initiatives and ideas such as car, car sharing, organic food, matchmaking uh, system, eco merchandising, et cetera, et cetera. The next question, the next uh, assignment was, how can you make your events as healthy and mindful as possible? Uh, I would like to highlight cats at this point. It's always a good idea to bring in cats or at least watch a cat video. I'm joking, but it was just fun, you know, like uh, making it a little bit more lighter, but also like still meaningful. Um, the last, the third example was obviously talking about the technology and this kind of a topic. Once again, students coming up with some nice ideas, uh, making their brains basically work. And it's not just this one case. Uh, um, it's not just this isolated case. I would like to um, encourage you to watch this video, which, is, uh, which was done by Eric Mazur. Uh, he's the physics professor at Harvard. And uh, he came up, uh, he's, he's a great uh, supporter and, and really enthusiast of this active learning, basically, method. There's the video uh, called The Confessions of the Convert Lecture, where he really goes deeper into the system of how he works. I'm going to show you a really simplified version over here. Um, he basically talks about a certain topic uh, in physics. Uh, what he does afterwards, he asks the students the question and uh, with, with the instruction to explain that particular pro problem uh, to their, uh, to their uh, peers and to their friends in a smaller groups. So for instance, uh, he breaks the auditorium uh, in a smaller groups of four to five and gives them, a, gives them a question such as, how would you explain the gravitational force to your colleagues? And they have to explain it to each other. And usually the magic actually happens and, uh, some, and, and often and kids are better at explaining these concepts uh, to each other. An important third point that he actually does, he gets people to commit to the answer. Um, uh, and in the, he usually does that in a multiple choice uh, poll and gets them to pick the, 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 the right answer. And once he sees the results basically coming up on screen, then he provides the further explanation and just uh, marks the correct answer and just debriefs basically the whole uh, exercise. So once again, it's not only about one way uh, style of presentation, but he brings in this um, interactive element of uh, forming the smaller groups and getting them to interact with each other, whether it's a brainstorming or the instruction. Uh, so how to pull this off? Um, four simple steps. Ask the question related to the problem you just presented or to the topic. Uh, break the, break the, the large auditorium or the large group of students in a smaller groups and uh, let them discuss the ideas or explain the topic in a small groups. Uh, get them to commit to their answer in a poll. And then finally, make sure that you explain and you do the debrief of basically the whole exercise. And you know what's ahead of us at this point. We would love to find out whether this format, whether this concept would be applicable to your classes. So yes, you can't wait to try it out. Sounds interesting, I have to think about it. Or not really. Oh, great. You're, you're already doing better than me. Look at that, 0% not really. Yeah. <laughs> oh, not really. Oh, another clear slate. But it's great to, we're, we're just joking over here, but it's great, to, uh, it's great to see and great to hear that this kind of a concept um, is actually resonating. I can see the comment coming from Patrick. His name is Eric Mazur, Eric, E-R-I-C-M-A-Z-U-R. 
uh, great stuff. Uh, don't worry, we're going to share the link in the slides afterwards, so you can just click it and watch it. He's a brilliant guy and, uh, and, and, and uses, uses the pulse and combines it uh, with these kind of active learning methods. So don't worry, we're just going to share it with you so you can watch it later on. Great, so it seems that this kind of a concept really resonated. Um, and I think uh, it's time for us, since you voted for these two, uh, to move on to the last, basically, stage um, of... I have, a, I have a question. Oh, I'm sorry, sure, go sorry. ahead. Sorry to be jumping in. Um, so someone is asking, uh, they use preview peer uh, interaction a lot with medical professionals, but mm -hmm. some of they struggle because they're saying that they pay to hear the professor and not the students and mm -hmm. it is. Oh, that's a, that's a great point. And uh, I think it's, it's really about taking a look at the agenda holistically. Like uh, you definitely want to hear from the experts in the field, but hearing from the experts, from 10 experts in the row, that is pretty, um, pretty tough to basically uh, digest all the information. So at a certain point, um, that, that's what we observed, like the, the, the event participants or conference participants or students, they're craving for more interaction. And this is something what we have implemented at all of our all company meetings. Like we usually have executives uh, give the updates on the business, but the, the, the second part of the all company offsite uh, is dedicated to these roundtable discussions on, or discussions in a smaller groups. So it's difficult to combine it. Obviously, you want to hear from the experts, executives, or from, from really people that are on top of their things, but you also want to create that space for the interaction. And many brilliant ideas uh, and synergies are born this way. And then one more question. Um, any tips on how to divide into the groups? Mm -hmm. So you want to you want to make it as simple as possible. And as mentioned, you can pull this off really in even in the auditorium. The simplest way is just to put people in pairs, or just tell people sitting in the front row to turn around and speak to their neighbors in the back. Um, so really depends on the size, depends on the setup, but you can, you can really scale it up, uh, up to 500 people, even, 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 as I said, like even 500 people. Um, it's just the, the, these kind of a small facilitation hacks that really work. If you have the luxury of a large space, uh, it's amazing to have the round tables or getting people to stand up and for the groups on their own. This works really brilliantly and brings another interactive element, a little bit of physical exercise as well. Cool. Thank you. Okay, brilliant. So I think it's time for us to move to the third part of the conversational presenting methodology and its feedback. Um, as, as, a, as a lecturer or us as presenters, we spend so much time and we put so much effort into preparing those slides and that content and delivering a great engaging speech, or at least that's what we think. And then we just basically wrap things up and we are totally blind about how the presentation went. Whether it's whether it resonated with with people or we totally missed the mark, whether they found it engaging or it was totally boring. So what we do at every single and now presentation meeting or the lecture or the training that we basically run, we always wrap things up with a very very simple feedback form, and you can ask something as simple as how would you rate this session? How would you rate this lecture? And it's gonna give you already an idea and. You're going to do that pulse check of how well you did, whether you should really improve things or really uh, things were going fine and all you need is just to fine tune things or just leave them as they are. You can go even deeper and just uh, really drill down and ask what was the most useful part of this lecture and it really is going to give you the pointer pointers on the, on, on the pieces of content that resonated basically with people. Uh, if you want to uh, run uh, multiple questions at the same time, you want to find out how well you did uh, on on, on, on a big scale, um, you and, and then just basically go down. You can create a you can create a simple survey and just basically activate it all at once and let people basically to fill it in. Three practices over here, uh, just to boost the the the, the rate of uh, the students um, that fill in these like a surveys. Keep it simple. Keep it really really simple. The the rating poll it takes 
just a second um, and make sure that students really fill it in while they are still in the classroom. And as mentioned uh, in the context of the survey, make sure that uh, you leave some room for open comments. That's where really the golden nuggets are uh, shared from the participants, from the, from the speakers, and uh, they just give you the pointers on which areas either of your delivery or of the content you should really improve. And in this way, you're going to basically close the whole circle of planning for interaction, of interacting with the students and asking for the feedback and just like improving your next lecture. And that's all from our side when it comes to lecturing or sharing the theory. And I would like to give a word back to Uri, who is going to take us to the backstage. All right, let's do it. Now, this is, so you know, you know the methodology, uh, but now how do you do it in practice? Uh, and I know it could sound like an overwhelming thing to add all these interactions, but that's what we want to do in this quick sort of live demo. And bear with me, live demos tend to go horribly wrong, but we'll hope for the best. Uh, we've been working really hard for the past few months on a integration with Google Slides and Slido. And this is really with the goal to make it super seamless for educators, presenters to add these interaction points like we've done for this presentation with the live polls. So let me escape this presentation right now. Uh, you will see that this is the Google Slides deck that we've been working it, working with and that we've prepared. And uh, just for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna create a few polls more just so we see uh, what it looks like in the practice and that the technology is really more of a just enabler for that and not really, uh, it should stay in the background basically. So with Google Slides, uh, we have developed this add-on uh, that I have already installed and I have it uh, open in the sidebar here within Google Slides. I've also already logged into my Slido account. If you don't have one, you would be able to sign up for one from here. You don't have to leave the Google Slides interface at all. And uh, once I'm in here, I can basically start creating more, more polls. So I'm gonna cl click on create a live poll. Um, there's a few questions I had in mind that I wanted to ask you. The first one uh, I'm gonna do as a rating poll, uh, which you've already experienced during the presentation. And I'm gonna ask you about how excited are you about the idea of conversational classroom? Let's put it to six stars. I think that's gonna be interesting feedback for, for your, and I, your and I. Um, all right, that poll has been created. So what kind of happened in, in this short glimpse, uh, the poll has been created on the back end in your Slido account basically and it has been already also added to this Google Slides presentation. This is the holding slide and you can see the poll here. I can go back there, edit it if I wanted to. Now the second poll, I'm going to cheat here a little bit. I had one poll in mind but I've been seeing here a lot of questions about PowerPoint integration from you all uh, which is the, the elephant in the room seems like right now. I'm gonna, I'm curious to see, let's do a quick poll on what presentation tool do you use the most? And then I will answer those questions as well. So let's do Google Slides. Oops, Slides. Let's do PowerPoint. Let's do Keynote, Prezi, and let's do other. All right, that's gonna be the multiple choice poll. And then, Yura was just talking about feedback and surveys, um, and we haven't actually created the survey poll for this presentation, so that's going to be the next thing that I want to do. Uh, I'm going to do create a live poll again. This time let's do a survey. Survey in Slido is technically, it allows you to group more of these questions into one. So I'm going to do a survey and ask you how likely are you to recommend this? webinar to a friend or colleague, doesn't matter. Friend is even better, I guess. Um, so that's gonna be a rating. Oh, sorry, typing it wrong. That's the question. It's gonna be the survey name. Let's do 10 stars for this one. And then I'm gonna add one more question uh, just to create an opportunity for those golden nuggets as you were was saying. Uh, let's do open text and let's say any other comments for the presenters. Awesome. Let's hit save. And that's going to be the survey created. And what you can also see right now on the screen, this is a holding slide that we've added previously for a Q&A session. So um, we already have, what, 18 questions in there. So thanks so much for sending those. Feel free to send more, more of those. We'll get to them. 
Uh, but right now, let me get back here. I'm gonna launch the presentation again. Cool. So now let's let's um, it's over to you again. Uh, we should have a poll here. Oh, cool. Already voting. So how excited are you about the idea of conversational classroom? This is the first webinar that we are doing on this topic, um, especially for the EDU uh, segment. So really excited to hear how that resonates. Seems like it's 5.4. That's cool. Out of six. Awesome. And almost 60 people have voted. It's really good. Thank That's you so much for, yeah. Thank you for the feedback. Like you, uh, we're you are taking off that 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 blindfold that, uh, in the picture that uh, that I've just shared. Like this is a really a priceless feedback, basically for us to know whether this kind of a idea uh, is actually resonating. Without this, we would be totally blind. So thanks for that. Really awesome. And then let's move on to the second question, which is what presentation tool do you use the most? So. I, I tweaked a little bit. Uh, I selfishly wanted to get some feedback on the Google Slides integration and how excited you are to use that. But uh, as Alex was giving me hints here, there's a lot of you asking about PowerPoint integration. So while you're voting, I'm gonna quickly answer that as well. Uh, so yes, we have chosen to invest heavily into Google Slides to start with, but we are investing into whole presenter experience for, for teachers, for presenters, whether it's a meeting or it's a lecture that you're organizing. We want to make that experience of using Slido ultimately super seamless and super easy so that you don't have to leave whatever tool it is, PowerPoint, Google Slides, doesn't matter. So we started with Google Slides uh, and we've learned a lot. Uh, we've developed it with a lot of users, both in EDU and some of our corporate clients. And next we want to tackle PowerPoint, of course, as this poll is kind of confirming, PowerPoint is, is huge and I know a lot of you use it. So we've actually started um, designing some of the prototypes We'll love to work with you on that as well. So when we send you the follow-up with the uh, recording, if you have already, if you've used Slido before and used it together with PowerPoint, it was clunky. If you have any ideas for us, please do respond and uh, I would love to chat with you and sort of get those ideas and work with you as we develop the first version of the integration. Um, if it was something that we'll start working on probably later this fall, beginning of uh, winter, and hopefully uh, launching that uh next year but again we'd love to have you as early uh adopters of the, the beta so this is a good pulse check uh for us as well to see what tools we need to um sort of work on there was a question on crazy as well um so right now whatever other tool presentation tools you're using powerpoint crazy keynote we have a tool called slider switcher that that you can uh, basically use to uh, facilitate that switching between Slido and the other presentation software. So we can include that in the follow-up as well. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, and I wanted to answer one more thing regarding PowerPoint. A lot of the questions asked about Office 365 in general. Uh, so I know a lot, a lot more educational institutions are getting to Teams, Teams for uh, Education. Uh, and we are actually working on uh, with the Teams, at Teams, Microsoft Teams. As well so any feedback that you have on that on powerpoint teams uh we would love to hear that and should we let's see questions let's yeah. see questions we have oh let know. me quickly wrap up on this one so this was again just a really really quick uh sort of show of what the integration looks like and how we use it to, to add all those interaction points that you've participated with throughout the webinar um again as i said we're rolling this integration out so we'd love to get all your feedback. We'd love to have you try it out. Uh, if, you, if you're up for it, and if you're using Google Slides, visit slido.com forward slash Google Slides, and you'll be able to install the add-on for free there. Uh, Slido has a forever free plan, so there's really nothing stopping you if you want to play around. And then we also have education pricing as well. So again, looking forward to hearing your feedback and what else we should build. Cool, with that, let's do questions. Yeah, we have a few technical questions and then we have some that are uh, about the, inter uh, the uh, interaction part. Um, so which ones do you think we should take first? Let's, do, the, let's do interaction first. Interaction. Okay. Um, all right, do you ever uh, find that using Slido makes students more distracted? You ready? Want to take this one? Sure, I can take this one. Uh, and I was just like checking which one you actually picked. So you picked the one 
uh, with the one votes. Uh, let's take, let's start with that topic and then move to the technical side of things. Um, a very frequent question. And uh, the answer is like, if you facilitate it well, it is really a tool that can help you lead that conversation at the scale. But it's mostly about the interaction uh, and about the facilitation and, and how well it's actually integrated. It's about forming those small groups, getting people to brainstorm ideas, and only then bringing in the technology or quizzing them, presenting the, 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 the topic, presenting the content, and then just making it a bit more fun, a bit more engaging. So um, yes, if it's used well, it can really help you to scale that interaction. But it's mostly about that um, interaction between students themselves or between the conversation with you uh, and the students. All right. Uh, we have a question about inappropriate responses from the students and how do we block that? That's a great question, Bobby. Um, I mean, the, the, the best way to do this with Slido is we have a, uh, we have a feature and ability to basically review the questions before they are displayed live um, to all students, to the whole class. And that's something you or someone helping you in the classroom as an admin can basically manage. That's something that Alex is kind of helping us to do right now. Uh, and that person will be able to either approve that question before it goes live or dismiss it or even reply to that people, uh, that person. Say maybe try rephrasing the question or avoid these words. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's a sort of common answer. We are also working on some of the uh, some other features and profanity filters. Uh, those are all in beta, but again, Bobby, if you'd like to get early access and try it out, uh, we'd love for you to, to have that in, uh, actually this one is in Slido Labs yeah, already. Yeah. Awesome. We'll do a follow up as well, but if you are already a Slido user, if you go to your settings in Slido Labs, this feature is already there so you can try it out and let us know if that helps. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Next question. Can I mute questions until I want them? You're right, number one or two. <laughs> you can I sure. uh, so first of all, uh, sure, you can turn on the moderation. I'm now referring um, to the second part of that question about the foolish questions. Uh, so yes, you can turn on the moderation and every question that comes uh, through Slido that was that has been submitted, you can review it and just approve it. When you approve it, it uh, appears on the screen. If you dismiss it, uh, it basically just doesn't appear uh, appear on the screen. Uh, so I guess that should cover it, right? Yeah. I can fire through the, the next two if you want. They're pretty technical. The mm -hmm. Slido support equation figures. Unfortunately, not. Um, it has been worked on at our internal hackathon, but that's all I can say. It's not in production. Is there a way to export student responses to Excel, CSV? Definitely yes, both Excel uh, and CSV and also Google Sheets recently. Um, super easy, super simple. That's something that you can basically work with, uh, continue your work workflow. Mm -hmm. Um, happy to take the next one. Um, often I'm presenting at conferences and not using my own computer. Yes, that's a very, very uh, frequent use case. Um, when this happens, the thing that you can do is, uh, and you don't want to use the integration, you can use our small piece of software, which is called Slido Switcher that uh, Uri just mentioned. You can just go to slido.com slash switcher and just download it from there, even uh, if it's not your computer and just basically log in with your, uh, with your details and then basically do the seamless switching. But as with other topics, we are happy to take this basically, uh, basically offline and tell you more details on how to actually manage this. But there is a way how to go around with that, uh, around that with, uh, with the slider switcher. You can do that. Okay. And then we have a question about privacy. Should I take it? Yep. I can take it. Um, and I saw there's one more comment about privacy in Google Slides, so maybe I can combine those two. Uh, I mean, the, the short answer to this question, and um, thanks for sending it, is, is no. As, as, as soon as the question or poll is sent anonymously, then it really is anonymous. So um, I think that's, that's all that we need to say here. And there was a question about uh, Google Slides, whether with the Google Slides integration, Slido can access your presentations or the content of your presentations. Short answer to that is no. Uh, we have to, when you're installing it, you'll be, you'll be basically seeing a permissions uh, pop-up where you have to give permission Slido to 
access your presentations. And that's just so we can basically uh, present them in this format where we present your presentation and slide it together, but we're not accessing your presentations. We're not viewing the content um, on our, our side. On our yeah. side. Cool. Accessibility. The URI in Slovakia, you can take this one. <laughs> Sure. Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure I do understand this question, to be perfectly honest. But uh, if we are talking about uh, basically uh, making sure that anybody can participate through Slido, uh, then in that case, this is really one of our missions. First of all, we try to make it as accessible and as simple as possible. So anybody, anybody with a simple um, internet enabled device can actually participate through Slido. So whether they have a simple smartphone or a computer, they can really access Slido and participate in. So we try to make it as democratic as possible and really bring down any barriers that there are possible. So all you need is basically a, a internet enabled device and you are, you are good to interact uh, with the students and students are good to interact with, with you. Now I'll just add to this one that, um, again, just in short, but we uh, have also optimized Slido for the accessibility measures and some of the sort of global international requirements. So you can share more details on that if you like, if there's anything specific that you're not sure about. I think let's take one more and then we can wrap it up. Okay, which one do you want guys? Are there any in the, in the chat or should we just pick one of these? I think we covered the ones in the chat. Okay, cool. Um, Oh, I think we can take the third one, if okay, which you could these polling tools be used for teaching on an, uh, in an online environment, since we are in the online environment where students are progressing uh, on the material at their own pace. When you are hosting the online lectures and online sessions, yes, it's totally possible to use it in the online space. Also, you can embed basically Slido. Uh, within the website. So if you'd like to run polls within the website, you can do that. But the magic is really in that uh, real time interaction with the students. So if you're hosting a lecture like this, you can totally use it in the online environment. Okay. Cool. cool. So thank you so much for everybody for participating. As you can see uh, in the background, it's already dark over here and we are just, uh, um, we are finishing right on time. Uh, so before, before you uh, log out, um, as we were talking about the importance of feedback, uh, we have just created a very simple one. Uh, please let us know what you think about this webinar. Uh, let us know how we can improve it for the next time. And uh, we'll just take your, take your comments and feedback to heart. And once again, thank you so much for finding the, the, the one hour slot in your schedules. Appreciate you joining. Uh, I'm going to share the recording as well as all the resources with you, uh, including the slides. So thank you. Thank you again for joining and really appreciate you being with us.